And now we get to what my high school calculus teacher affectionately called the Epsilon Delta Confusion. Um, this video is on the precise definition of a limit, uh, and it relates to um, James Stewart's uh, sixth edition uh, calculus textbook, chapter two, section four. He's renumbered, the number chapters are renumbered in later editions. But anyway, um, every calculus textbook, except for maybe a high school calculus textbook, is going to have a section on the precise definition of a limit. This is really for the math majors, in my opinion. If you're an engineer, if you're a science chemist, if you're a physics, you know, if you're if you're taking calculus in high school because your parents don't like you, like I don't like my children, uh, then you really don't need to know this. This is common sense um, in in many respects. Um, the, the typical student who tries to read this is like, what is this? What is going on? I don't understand it. No, no, you actually do understand it. What is puzzling is why? Why do you do this? Why do you do this? This is not important. This is common sense. But of course, uh, in fact, Newton, Newton didn't do this. Leibniz didn't do this. Euler didn't do this. The, the Bernoulli brothers didn't do this. It was uh, Augustin Louis Cauchy in the 1800s who did this to us, those cursed mathematicians of the 1800s. This is not important. It is not important to life. However, uh, because I'm doing these calculus visits, uh, videos, I will go through it. Mr. Pickett in high school, my high, high school calculus teacher said that he only knew one person that understood this epsilon delta confusion and that he was always falling down the stairs at Florida State. Uh, but I don't actually believe him. I think he understood it. It's not really that hard. It's just why? Why, SpongeBob? Why? Okay, let's. Here's the basic concept. So, here you have a nice little x y. You know, Cartesian coordinate phrase. There's a function. Look, f of x. It's a nice little function. So the limit as x approaches a. Here's a. This represents a a x value. As um, as x approaches a. Of course, we could come from the right hand side too, but. Uh, as x approaches a, um, y is approaching a limit. This is the limit, the y value, the limit, the f of x value. And here's exactly where it is, right? The f of x, this is, this is the point. This is the limit um, of f of x. This point represents the limit of f of x as x approaches a. Now what Cauchy did is he introduced this concept of an epsilon and a delta. It's your Greek letters. And so, basically, he said that, the, that he was trying to come up with a, a vigorous definition of a limit, okay? A minus, this is a minus delta down here on the x value, and this is a plus delta on the x value. And what we're doing is we're triangulating that as, as this delta gets smaller, uh, this epsilon gets smaller. Here's the official definition for the purists. For the purists out there, for you math majors, let f be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a. Now, at, at this point, continuity is the next video. Um, maybe it's not at a day for the definition of a limit. The limit a limit can exist without uh, a being defined. Uh, never mind, it's not important. Um, so you're on some interval that contains the number a, which is an x value. Uh, then we say that the limit of x, f of x, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l. That is, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is l if and only if, uh, if for every epsilon is greater than zero, there is a number delta greater than zero such that um, as uh, x gets pro closer to a, then f gets closer to l. That is basically what the bottom part's saying. It's saying that there is a delta value that is greater than zero because we're, we're approaching, x is approaching a, x is not at a, x is not at a yet, uh, and so x minus a is, is a is a value. It's a small value maybe. Maybe, you're got, maybe you've gotten really close on the x-axis. Um, so it's not quite zero. X has not gotten to a yet. There is some delta uh, such that uh, there is an epsilon that is getting close uh, to, uh, to l. That f of x minus the limit, you know, okay, what is this all about? Again, it's basically saying that as delta gets smaller, epsilon gets smaller. Well, that's, and you're, you're, you're like, wait wait a minute, that, that's not hard to understand. No, it's not. The question is why? Why would anybody do this? But you know, in the 1800s, 
math, math, mathematicians went rigor, rigorous on it to try to come up with these technical definitions, okay? So that's really all this section is. Um, it's not important to life unless you're a math major, in my opinion. And actually, even as a math major, I'm not sure how important it is to life. Okay, so the definition of a left-hand limit. We're coming from the left. Um, the limit as x approaches a from the left-hand side of f of x equals l, if for every number, uh, same old, same old, epsilon is greater than zero, there's a number delta such that, blah, 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 blah. Um, so this is saying that on the left-hand side, um, basically, you have this delta in between x and a, blah. And then right-hand limit, the same. The limit as x approaches a from the right-hand side, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's it. That's the first section right there. Um, happy days are there again. Um, so, okay, let's move on. What about the definition of an infinite limit? Again, to me, the definition of an infinite limit is pretty straightforward. But here's, here's the now technical definition for you math majors out there. Let f be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a, except possibly a itself, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals infinity. This means that for every positive number m, there is a number delta such that delta hasn't quite reached, uh, a, uh, uh, x hasn't quite reached a, there's some value delta between x and a, such that f can still go greater than m, some other arbitrary number. Uh, in other words, you can keep going up for every, for every bit you squeeze closer to A, you can still go up. Um, again, that's what, that's what it is, intuitively. This is, all this is is expressing in technical uh, language what you already know intuitively a limit is. Okay, well, here's a, here's a graph. So, there's, so as the, the x, x can't get to infinity because infinity is not a number, right? Um, but, but this is basically saying the limit as x approaches A, x is approaching A, the limit as x approaches a is infinity if for every little bit we squeeze uh, closer, every closer delta we get, m gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That this is a line that goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up. You know, that basically the, the smaller delta gets, the bigger m, 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 m gets. You know, that's all that's saying. That is all that that is saying. And so finally, we have the, the definition of negative infinity that does the same thing, except it goes down. That the, the smaller delta gets, the lower, 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 the, the, the uh, n, the, we'll use the letter n. So let f be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a. Then the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals negative infinity if for every negative number m, uh, actually n, should be n, uh, there is a negative number delta such that blah, 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 uh, f is less than n. Okay, in other words, this delta gets smaller and gets lower and 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 l